lifted up. Let our King be lifted up. Oh, let our King be lifted up. Let our King be lifted up. Oh, we lift him. We lift him higher. We lift him higher. Oh, we lift him higher. Oh, let our King be lifted up. Oh, let our King be lifted. Come on, raise your voice. Let our King be lifted up. Oh, let our come on. Told our God, come on, lift those hands. Raise your voice. Oh, let our King be lifted. Come on, told our God. Let our King. Come on, give him what to heal our praise. Hallelujah. Oh. Jesus, you be lifted higher. How many just love lifting him higher? Come on. Higher. Jesus, you be lifted. Jesus, you be lifted higher. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a halayo praise. Come on, make a hilarious boast in the Lord. Celebrate him. Celebrate Jesus. Come on. If you were here Wednesday night, Come on, give him a halayo praise. Why are you giving him a halayo praise? Hallelujah. You ought to be giving a Yoda praise at the same time. Lift those hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By now, your Yoda should be turning into a Toda praise. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Ma, 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 ma. Hallelujah. We're going to get into the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to get into the word of the Lord. Anybody feel something happening this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout. Wonderful things happen when we lift the name Jesus. Tell them you have a wonderful name. Come on, tell somebody, say, you have a wonderful name. But greater things happen when we lift the name Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's turn to Psalms today, 18 and 3. Psalms 18 and 3. Psalms 18 and 3. Our scripture lesson is going to be coming from Psalms 18 and 3. Hallelujah. While the musicians continue to play softly, amen, right there. Hallelujah. As they're giving a Zama praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's playing on the string instruments and just hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, 
they're still praising God. That's, come on, tell somebody, say, that's a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, tell somebody, say, that's a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh, the scripture says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Now let's read that together. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Let's read it again. Let's read it to, together and let's read it intentional. Let's read it with power. Let's read it with conviction. Hallelujah. Notice the first two words in this, uh, uh, first three words is I will call. I, I, I will call. It's a hallelujah. Yeah. So I want you to I want you to see that. Hallelujah. Because that's a change in mind. That's that that is a declaration. That is something that you make up your mind. This is what I'm going to do. Problems come. Situations come. But let me tell you what I'm going to do about these problems. Let me tell you what I'm going to do about this situation. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what my response to what's coming against me is. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout, I will, I will call upon the Lord, upon the Lord who, is who is worthy to be praised, so shall I, so shall I be, saved be saved from my enemies. From my enemies. I want to use for a subject matter for a little while this morning, my praise is intentional. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, my praise, my praise is, is intentional. intentional. Come on, find somebody else around you, hallelujah, on the right of you or the left of you, and tell them, say, my praise, my praise is, is intentional. Is. Now find somebody behind you, hallelujah, hallelujah, greet with, because you need to know who you're going to praise God with, and tell them, say, neighbor, my praise, my praise is, is intentional. intentional. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let's have a, our morning discussion today. You know, brothers and sisters, it's easy to praise God when the sun is shining. It's easy to praise God when our children are making good grades in school. It's easy when we have received a promotion at work. But when the storm clouds gather and the, and the grades start to slip and the pink slips are red, the last thing we feel like doing is praising God. Yet this is the very time we need to lift our voice and to praise him. Oftentimes we miss the opportunity to glorify God. You may ask the question, why is praise so important? What is it about praise that causes the enemy to hate when you praise God? Can I tell you that the enemy hates when you praise God? I want you to know that praise is so powerful that the enemy hates it when you praise God from the position and the posture that you're supposed to praise him from. I'm not talking about superficial stuff. I'm not talking about moving because the music moves. I'm talking about a conviction. I'm talking about a place where I make a declaration that God has been good to me and no matter what I am faced with, no matter what I look at, God has been good to me. Hallelujah! And he deserves praise. Uh, how many know that the Lord deserves praise? He, he deserves it. Praise, uh, you know, praise is giving a person what they are due. It is giving an individual what they are due. 
In other words, they have delivered the goods. They have been consistent with delivering the goods. And because they are consistent with delivering the goods, they are due praise. Some people want praise and haven't delivered. You know, uh, oftentimes we want praise for doing the job that we were hired to do. Well, why do you get praise for doing what you're hired to do? That's what you're supposed to be doing. That's what you're getting paid for, you know? You know? Uh, but yet we want pats on the back for doing what we're paid for. But when you look at God, God goes beyond, beyond. When you think God is done, when you think that you don't deserve goodness, I mean, when you have counseled yourself out of the blessing. Have you ever counseled yourself out of the blessing? You know, you say, man, you know, God, there's no way in the world God would do anything for me because look what I've done. I promised God things. I said that I would do this for the Lord, and I came up short. I made vows to the Lord, and I did not deliver what I said I was going to do. But yet God is still merciful, and he's still kind to us. And so we may ask the question, why is praise so important? Praise is important because when we praise God, we proclaim our faith in God, that God is our creator and the reason for our existence. We proclaim our faith in God and we believe that God is our creator and he is the reason for our existence. He is the, we proclaim our faith in our God, our creator. And we profess that he is the reason for our existence. I proclaim my faith. And he is the reason for my existence. Which means without him, there would be no me. Without him, I don't care what, there would be no me. Let me digress for a moment. The Bible says that Adam was shaped out of the dust of the earth. He was made in the image and the likeness of God, but he was shaped out of the dust of the earth. Everybody shout dust. dust. However, before we go to the dust, it's very important for you to understand what Lucifer's job was. Lucifer's job was to praise. It was to usher in praise. He had music built in him. It was to usher in praise. Praise was so important to God that one of his angels was in charge of praise. You remember when uh, uh, Isaiah saw the Lord that he was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. What do we see when he sees? He sees the angels, the seraphims and the cherubims flying, crying, holy, holy, holy. So we understand that praise is important to God. But what is praise? Praise is to acknowledge one who is faithful and worthy of honor. Lucifer decided that he was going to take that praise. What belonged to God, he decided that he was going to take it and reserve it for himself. Can I tell you, never sit on your praise. Never steal God's praise. Never decide I'm not going to praise God because that praise is for him. It is reserved for him. Well, the Bible says that God didn't like it. And because God didn't like it, what did he do? 
He stripped him of his beauty. You see, Lucifer thought he was the light. But Lucifer was only a reflection of the light. He was not the light. He could only do what he did because of the light. In other words, without the light, he was empty. Without the light, he was in darkness. Without the light, he was nothing. But what he did was he illuminated and came through Lucifer. And Lucifer was able to do what he did. When God departed from Lucifer, boom, all of his beauty was gone. When God stepped away from Lucifer, boom, everything that he was created to be was not. When God leaves a thing, I don't care what you thought you were, you no longer are. And the word Satan means this, adversary of God. It's not deep, it means enemy of God. So every time you see Satan, what you see is enemy of God. Something that used to be or something that was created to give him glory and to give him honor has now become a enemy of God. You don't want to end up on the wrong side of God. Tell somebody, say, you were created to praise him. Now, I think God has a humor. I think he's hilarious in so many ways. Because when people think, you see, Lucifer thought that it could not be done without him. He, he had this music in his wings. He, he, he thought it could not be done without him. And what God decided to do was to get some dust. Get some dust. Sweeping some dust together. He went out. I don't know if he began to sweep his yard or how he got the dust, how he collected the dust. But he got some dust together. And he formed that dust. Now, my question is, how do you form dust? Think about that. How do, you, how do you take dust and form dust? You can form dirt, but how do you form dust? How do you take nothing and make nothing into something? That's why Galatians says, if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he what? Deceiveth what? himself. So he says, don't be deceived. Lucifer got deceived. So he says, for us not to be deceived. Because God is creator, he can take nothing and make nothing into something. But more importantly, he took that nothing and he breathed into nothing and nothing became. He took the nothing, he breathed into nothing, and nothing became something. As I begin to look at this, I was talking to my son the other day, and the Lord began to give me some things to share. Um, the thing popped in my mind, or my spirit, is how do you breathe into dust, and dust doesn't move? You see, because the enemy of dust is the wind. Come on, think about it now. The enemy of the dust. Have you ever been trying to sweep? And while you were trying to sweep, some wind came and then everything that you did just, just moves and it starts flying all over the place. What do you say? Turn that fan off. 
Because if the fan ever breathes or blows on the dust, the dust is going everywhere. But God took wind, blew into nothing, and nothing had to stand still until it became something. He breathes into it and it stands still. And man became a living soul. Man became something. Then he says, consider when people transition. People transition. I don't know if you ever had the privilege. I don't want to say the privilege or the occasion to be at somebody's bedside when they transition. Within a few moments, something that was something, something that was precious, something that was valuable, becomes invaluable. What do I mean by invaluable? Meaning, in just a short time, it begins to get cold. It cannot respond. It begins to change colors. And eventually, it begins to, ah, uh, rigor mortis sets in and it begins to decay. Why did it decay? It was just something. Why did it, what happened? It was so precious to me. It was so warm to me. What happened? What was making it something stepped out of it and it became nothing. From ashes to ashes to dust to dust. It goes back to its original intent, which God is really telling us, the only thing that's preserving you is my spirit inside of you. I don't care how wonderful you think you are. The only thing that's holding you together is my spirit that lives on the inside of you. And you mean to tell me I'm holding you together and I can't get a praise out of you? You mean to tell me that, that you're something because I live inside of you and I can't get a hallelujah out of you? You mean to tell me things are that bad that you won't praise the God that's holding you together even though the thing is bad, but without me, you couldn't even respond to the thing that you upset about. So really, without God, you are nothing. But then he, then, he, then, he, then he again gave me another point of view. He says, I made man storm-proof. What do you mean, I made him storm-proof? What was a enemy to the dust? I showed the dust that I'm able, if I'm in you, I can hold you together. So whatever comes against you, you need to understand the only way you existed is because there's something greater inside of you. And the only reason why you're able to face the storms that come against you is because I am holding you together. What do you mean? Greater is he that is, that's why I had to breathe into him because I had to get into him because while he lived, there's going to be all kinds of things that's going to be coming against him and he's need to know that there's something greater inside that's holding you together. I don't care what comes against you. Can I tell you that because he lives on the inside of you, you can make it? Yeah. 
because he abides on the inside. That's where the scripture said. I said it just before. He said, greater is he that is what? In me than he that is what? In the world. So the enemy's job is to try to keep you from seeing the value of God living on the inside of you. You see, if you can't see the value of God living on the inside of you, you'll get angry at the thing or the one that's holding you together. God, why you let this happen? If you were a God, you would look at the arrogance of us. If he was to withdraw his hand from us, where would we be? So praise has to be long to God. You cannot praise the creature more than the creator. Praise belongs to God. Somebody shout, praise belongs to God. Praise belongs to God. So when we praise God, we proclaim our faith in God as creator and reason for existence. Psalm 71 and 14 says this, but I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. I will hope continually. That word hope means to look forward with expectation. That's what it means, to look forward with expectation. So let's look at it. But I will look forward with expectation continually. Have you stopped dreaming? Have you stopped believing? Have you stopped believing that God would deliver, that God would save, that God would heal, that God would make a way out of no way? I will look forward with expectation continually. Are you inconsistent? Or are you consistent with your praise? Do you need music to praise? Or can you praise God while you're walking down the street by yourself? See, the real praise is when ain't nobody else around. You know, when, you know, we, we, we normally say it, but it's just a saying, but it's true. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. See, real praise is not praise until you have a good thought. Until you can call it up. Say, man, I don't deserve this, but God keep making a way out of no way. Oh, man. So real praise never feels as though they deserve anything. See, if you think that you deserve it, that's not real praise. Real praise can't see how God keeps making a way out of no way. Real, real praise. I'm talking about real praise now. I'm not talking about... See, it's, it's not, it's not self-serving. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not pumped up. It's not proud. It's actually, man, I don't see why God keep making a way out of no way. I, I, I wish I had about 25 folk this morning that could just pause and say, I don't know why God keep blessing me the way he blesses me. Now, 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 according to the Psalms, he says, he said, I will yet praise thee because he did it. I will yet praise thee more and more. My question is, you just gave God praise, but could you give him more praise? You just gave him a praise yesterday. And I, and I hear people say, well, I just praised him yesterday. I, I got up this morning. I, I praised him. I, I got up this morning. I prayed. I got up this morning. I acknowledged God. But according to this psalm, it said, the more I think about it, the more I want to praise him. So now what he's saying, he's saying, my mind is guarded all day by praise. Every time I think about it, I've got to put a praise on it. 
Every time I go through, I got to put a praise on it because praise is what he deserves. Come on, somebody shout, it's what he deserves. All right, let's go point number two. Point number one, when we praise God, we proclaim our faith in God as our creator and the reason for our existence. But point number two, real praise requires sacrifice. Real praise requires sacrifice. In other words, you have to be dead. Reckon yourself to be dead unto sin, but alive unto Jesus Christ. You have to crucify that flesh if you're going to give him real praise. You want to know why? Because that flesh says, I don't feel like it today. Can I tell you the very time that your flesh says don't, that's the time that you should? The very time that your flesh comes and that storm comes to try to make you stop praising God, you are embarking upon one of the greatest blessings of your life because if you can just press through. Tell somebody, say, you got to press your way through. So a sacrifice of praise is something that we offer to God. In times of well-being and in times of sorrow, praise should never become a habit or lose its authenticity. So praise shouldn't be a habit. You know, some people, it's a habit. One, two, three, shout. That's fine. But I'm talking about praise ought to be spontaneous. I'm talking about, you know, it shouldn't, you know, even like right now, somebody may be smothering upon a praise. There may be something on the inside and the Holy Spirit may say, you need to shout hallelujah right there where you are. And sometimes because we wait, because we try to make it fit the order of the day, we miss our blessing. You could be driving and the Holy Spirit could say, shut that radio off. And I want you to lift your hands right there at the red light while everybody's watching you and just praise God. You say, but God, everybody's watching me. You don't know what he's ordering for you in the supernatural. You may be sitting at your job in your cubicle and God says right now, not too loud, but, you know, just lift your hands right there where you are and just praise him. He may tell you, don't go to the cafeteria today. I want you to go on a walk. I got something I want to show you. And just by going out and looking at the trees and looking at the sun and looking at the cloud, that the cloud starts speaking to you and the trees start speaking to you and God starts speaking to you through, through the clouds. But it depends on what you do. Is praise my shout? Is praise my dance? Or is it my obedience? Is it my obedience? Look at somebody say, my praise is my obedience to do what he said when he said do it. So, so my praise is my, my obedience. It is a priceless honor to kneel before the throne of our Lord and Savior. One of the greatest misconceptions concerning praise is that it's something that we do for God. Can I tell you that God doesn't need your praise? <laughs> Can I tell you that God doesn't need your praise? But more importantly, he deserves your praise. Oh, he doesn't need your praise. You may have thought that God needed your praise. You know, around the altar, they're crying right now, holy. Yes, sir. Around the altar right now, don't you know it's a privilege to praise him? He said, if you don't praise me, let me tell you something. 
Oh, I'll put somebody else in your seat. Don't you worry about your seat. Your seat will be taken care of. He said, if you don't praise me, he said, the rocks will cry. What does he really say? Yeah, 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 physically, figuratively, yeah, the rocks can cry. How does a rock cry out? How does a rock cry? Look at somebody say, you were a rock one day. <laughs> Lord have mercy. The Jews wouldn't praise him. He came to his own and the, his own received him not. But as many as received him, gave he them the power to become the sons of God. So what God did, he went out and got some Gentiles. He went out and got some Gentiles and made a way for them to come in. People who were considered dogs, people who were considered nothing, and then brought them in and made them somebody people that you thought that the blessings of God would never be upon, people that you thought would never receive the favor of God, people that you thought it was over for, and God, hallelujah, reach way down, pick you up, place your feet on the rock to stay, and now brought glory to your name. But not for your name to be praised, for his name to be praised as a result of what he did in you and through you. So look at somebody said, no matter what, don't steal his glory. The glory belongs to him. The glory, come on, somebody shout it. The glory belongs to God. Come, come on. The, the Bible says, confess your faults one another. He said, and pray for one another that you may be healed. He, uh, come on, look at somebody and say, I ain't nothing. I come on, come on, hallelujah. Without him, I am nothing. Now, I'm not saying to make this declaration as to play yourself down now because you're something in Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. So that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is I want you to understand if it had not been for God on your side, you would be absolutely positively nothing. So therefore, what I want to do is I want to give all the glory back to God because he's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the honor. He's worthy of all blessing. Tell somebody, say, it all belongs to God. So it requires sacrifice. It, re it requires sacrifice. Number three, praise teaches us to be joyful and thankful regardless of our circumstances. Let me say it again. Praise teaches us to be joyful and thankful regardless of our circumstances. It prepares us for God's service and helps us to see beyond our present circumstances to the great possibilities that are, that are ours through the faith in Jesus Christ. So what is he saying? All things work together for good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. So whatever I am going through, it is an opportunity for God to get the glory through my life. Tell somebody, say, somebody's watching you. Somebody's watching you. Uh, yeah. Uh, whew, hallelujah. S some people know what you're going through, and then they're trying to figure out, how do you keep praising God? How do you keep it together? I know the word of God said he'll keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is there. But I thought that was just good reading. But now you become an illustrated sermon. Woo, hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Your family is looking at you saying, wait a minute, let's see. I, I know they went to church before. I want to see how long this is going to last. And now all of a sudden, what was supposed to be two months? Hallelujah. Your timetable has turned into years. Woo, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now you're praising him more and more and more and more and more. When 
People said you would never make it. It would never last. You are out of control. You have no discipline to yourself. Can I preach here? You have no discipline to yourself. Hallelujah. You're going to be in and out and in and out and in and out. But hallelujah, some way, somehow, God keep reaching way down and bringing you to higher heights and deeper depths in Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. When he used to come in, you used to trip out and cuss at everybody. Come on, let's be honest here. Uh, uh, hallelujah. Uh, now, 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 not everybody here was born in church. Uh, come on, let's give, let's give a disclaimer. Look at, look at somebody say, not everybody here was born in church. Not, not everybody came out holy and sanctified. Not everybody came out the mother's womb speaking in tongue. There's not a whole lot of John the Baptist that was saved in the mother's womb. But there's some people, hallelujah, had to be delivered from some things. There's some people who God had to reach down and deliver them and shape them, hallelujah, and turn them into a vessel of honor because, hallelujah, people saw them as a vessel of dishonor, but now now when people see you, they see honor on your name because, hallelujah, the word of God has come in and healed you. So now people have moved from, I wonder how long this is going to last, to did you hear such and such a say now? Did you, see, did you hear such and such got themselves together? It moved from this ain't going to last to will you pray for me? Oh, let me say it to this side because maybe, maybe y'all didn't get it. It moved from, oh, that ain't going to last. They just going through a phase right now. And now when they get in trouble, will you pray for me? If that ain't something to give God praise for, if that ain't something, whoo, Lord, have mercy. I feel this. I feel it. I feel it. Some folk couldn't get rid of grudges. That was your weakness. You cross me, I'm going to get you. Well, I wish I had a few folk here to, and be honest here. You cross me, I'm going to get you. And now you're saying, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Good Lord have mercy. You, you understand who you are in Christ. And you understand what happens when people come against the children of God. You understand, hallelujah, how much God loves you. And you have to now hold God back. Say, wait a minute, God. Wait, 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 God. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up, God. Don't, don't, don't. Please don't do that, God. Please, please give them some. Give me a little bit more time to intercede for them. Woo, hallelujah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Your whole speech has changed. The way you approach things have changed. You got rid of the old mind and a new mind has come upon you. Where you used to be out of control, now you're in control. Whoo, hallelujah. Because the power of the Holy Ghost has got down on the inside of you and keeping you all together. My grandmother used to sing a song, there's something within me that's holding the reins. There's something deep down in me. I can't explain. There's something within me. That something within you is God living on the inside of you. And therefore, we've got to learn to give God praise because it's not you that's holding you together. It's something within you and that something is him. Somebody give God praise that that something is him. No matter how deep your sorrow or how grave your circumstances may be, we can learn to praise God while acknowledging his sovereignty in our lives. Meaning, he's, he's sovereign. It's not about me. 
God, if you want to use me to get the glory, then God, what I want you to do is I want you to use me. Just get the glory. Get the glory out of my life. Is there anybody here who can say, Lord, get the glory? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout, Lord, I want you to get the glory. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands right there and say, Lord, I need you to get the, look, get the glory. So our circumstances all the time does, may not change immediately. But if we continue to wait on the Lord, he brings, he brings function out of dysfunction. He, he, he takes he takes and he puts glory where there was chaos it may not happen overnight but if you learn to wait on the Lord and keep praising him while you wait he somehow turns your midnight into day but you got to learn how to wait on the Lord. Oh, come on, encourage somebody say, wait on him. Wait on him. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout, wait on him. It doesn't mean that you hold your hands together. It doesn't mean that You continue to praise him while you wait. It means that you continue to give him glory while you wait. Are you going to give up while you wait? Does, does, you have to know that without him, there will be no you. So the sign that he is alive is the fact that you are here. The sign that he's still in control is that you're still breathing. The sign that he is still God and he can do anything, he still woke you up this morning. He still started you on your way. Whoo, hallelujah. Which brings me to my other point. Joy and praise provides fresh strength. No joy, no strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody, hallelujah, understand that the joy of the Lord is your strength, that you couldn't make it without his joy. Hallelujah. Can I tell you that if you waiting on the Lord right now, all you need to do, hallelujah, is joy in the Lord. That if you would just rejoice and joy in the Lord, that God would give you strength and understanding that surpasses all understanding. Do I have a witness here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You may be sitting here and saying, Lord, I can't make it, but I come to tell you, yes, you can. Hallelujah. You may be sitting here saying, Lord, I don't know, hallelujah, how I can make it, but the Holy Spirit sent me by here to tell you, oh, yes, you can. Hallelujah. Come on, look at somebody and say, oh, yes, you can. Come on, tell them. Say, God has just set you up. My God, hallelujah. God has set you up. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. To, for his glory to be shine on your life. I, I wish I had somebody here that, 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 that honestly, that, 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 that they had, uh, 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 forgot about you and said you would never make it and you had given up on yourself is there anybody here that's like that come on just raise your hand hallelujah come on let's be honest hallelujah Tell her, I had some days that I didn't even think that God cared about me I had some days that I thought that, hallelujah, that I had messed up so bad that God would not come and see about me. But you wanna know what I found out? Come on, help somebody next to you. 
because you're going to help them get some strength today. Come on, come on. I need somebody who's been delivered to help somebody who's going through. You, you know what I found out? That hallelujah, when, when I understood, when I was down to my last, then he stepped in right on time. When I was down to a place where I thought that I had blew it, he sent me supernatural strength. That's why when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that the Lord has done for me, my soul cries out, my God, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, 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 so tell your neighbor, say, excuse me, but my praise is intentional. I'm not praising him because hallelujah is Sunday. I'm praising him because hallelujah, without him, I would be nothing. Without him, hallelujah, I would fail. And I need my daily fix. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, some of you had a daily fix, all right, but it wasn't Jesus. But you found out, hallelujah, hallelujah, that if you have a good dose of joy, my God, hallelujah. Come on, tell somebody, say, I need my daily fix. My God, hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. That's why the devil tries to keep you from praising God. That's why the devil tries to keep you from giving him glory. But what I need somebody to do is make a hilarious boast in the Lord. Give him a halal praise. Come on, somebody give him a halal praise. Because real joy and praise will produce fresh strength. Look at somebody say, no joy, no strength. If you need some joy, with joy shall I draw from the wells of salvation. Look at somebody say, I'm going to get my fix this morning. Woo! Come on, tell somebody, say, I need my fix this morning. Well, you may say, you may say, well, I haven't dotted every I. And I haven't crossed every T. I, I, I don't deserve to praise him. But I heard the psalmist say, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Woo, hallelujah. My God, hallelujah. What I want you to do is just breathe again. Just, just breathe. Just, just breathe. Come on. Just breathe in. And then I want you to let it out. Breathe in. And I want you to let it out. I want you to breathe in. And I want you to let it out. Do you know what just happened? You breathed in life. And you let out poison. You breathed in oxygen and you let out carbon monoxide. Ooh, hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Can I tell you, you can't say hallelujah without getting a good dose of oxygen. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, come on. I dare you to say it. Come on, say it. Hallelujah. What did you have to do first? You had to inhale so you could exhale. Come on, hallelujah. Come on. Look at the look at your neighbor say, let that thing out. Every time you say hallelujah, you letting in life and you're getting rid of death. Come on, open your mouth and shout hallelujah. 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 The devil wants you to sit there with your arms folded. The devil wants you to sit there with your mouth closed. But I dare you today, say I need my daily fix. I need my daily dose. Come on, open your mouth and shout hallelujah. Hallel means to make a boast unto the Lord. 
to celebrate foolishly. But hallelujah means praise God he has risen. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So when I say hallelujah, I'm making a hilarious boast into the Lord. I'm making a declaration because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I can make it. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. Come on, grab somebody by the hand and say he lives. Come on, tell somebody, say he lives. He lives. He lives. Well, somebody trying to find him. Come on, when he breathed in your nostrils and you became a living soul, he said, not only do I live, but I live in you. I'm holding you together. And every time you get in trouble, if you would just learn to open your mouth and give me praise, if you would just open your mouth to give me glory continuously, if you just learn to hope in the Lord, keep open. It doesn't look like I'm coming out, but keep open. It doesn't look like I'm gonna make it, but keep open. It doesn't look like, hallelujah, I'm gonna make it out of this, but if you keep hoping, if you keep believing, for I will look to the hills from which cometh my help, for my help, my help coming from the Lord. Come on, I dare you to lift your hand. Come on. Give him. Woo! Give him that praise that he deserves. Come on. Come on. Come on. Open your mouth. 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 The scripture said, open your mouth wide and the Lord will fill it. Open your mouth wide. Come on, open your mouth. Hallelujah. Come on, while those hands are lifted. It's called a Yoda praise. Come on, extended hands up to heaven. It's called a Yoda praise. Come on, that ain't high enough. Come on, extend those hands all the way up, all the way up. Hallelujah to the Yoda becomes a Toda. Hallelujah to that praise. Hallelujah gets in your mouth to that praise gets down into your spirit to that praise while your hands are lifted while your hands are extended that praise gets in your mouth hallelujah praise him until the Torah becomes the Shabbat praise him do you feel the joy of the Lord standing up in you praise him do you feel God standing up when the Shabbat shows up he begins to command blessings hallelujah it's not you anymore it's God coming out of you it's God coming out of you it's God coming out of you it's the Holy Spirit coming out of you Hallelujah. My God, hallelujah. Kind of feel God in this house. Look, look at somebody and tell them, I, I command a blessing 
on you today come on look at them and, and command the blessings of God over their lives come on come on come on over your mouth open your mouth come on come on use that God voice use that God voice God is on the inside God is living on the inside come on open your mouth say I command a blessing of God on your life on your family over everything that's attached to you in the name of Jesus and just to seal it Look. come on tell him say just to seal it I want you to know my praise is intentional because when I praise God I acknowledge his existence he is my creator he is my God he is my king he is El Shaddai without him I would be nothing Woo! now what I want you to do I want you to praise him right there whatever God tells you to do you may Shabbat you may Toda you may Yada you may Halil you may Barak hallelujah we got Zama you may Tahila whatever God tells you to do seal it with a praise seal it with a praise seal it with a praise seal it seal it seal it seal it seal it I gotta go reach over and grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, neighbor. Praise, praise matters to God. Come on, look at somebody and say, praise, praise. Matters, matters to God. Come on, I want you to give them the word now. Say, weeping may endure for a night. In other words, weeping only has permission to stay for a certain period. Weeping may, it has my permission to stay for a night. But can I tell you, it's morning time. Look at somebody say, it's morning time. But joy comes in the morning. The reason why the joy is so important, tell them, say, the reason why the joy is important is because no joy, no strength. And you got work to do. You got a promise to fulfill. You got a destiny to be fulfilled. And you need your strength. You need your anointing. You need your power to conquer everything that God has given you power over tell somebody get your joy back get your joy back hold it hold it hold it I feel like somebody say but I'm surrounded pastor you don't know what I'm going through well in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts Paul and Silas was put into the inner prison. They were whipped because of praising God. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises. And wait a minute, we learn, we learn that that saying praises 
means they gave a Tehila praise in the prison. Look at your neighbor and say they gave a Tehila praise. And at midnight, they prayed and they gave a Tehila praise unto God. And guess what? It wasn't solid. Look at your neighbor and say, and it wasn't solid. You want to know how I know? Because the Bible said, and the prisoners heard them. Woo! Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you open your mouth, God is about to respond to your praise. If you open your mouth, God is about to get in your praise. He said, and suddenly there was a great earthquake and suddenly God began to move and suddenly God began to move when the praises go up when the praises go up when the praises go up blessings Woo! hallelujah how does the in other words nothing happens in heaven until it leaves the earth so I dare you to start praising him from the earth and let God get in your praise. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Get you a solace. Silence, get you a pause. And begin to open your mouth. Because praise, my praise is intentional. I'm letting you know we breaking out of here. Come on, grab your neighbor by the hand. Say, neighbor, I ain't just exercising. We about to break camp. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, the same enemy that put me in this prison is gonna have to take me out. It's gonna have to deliver me out. Come on here, come on here, come on here. Come on here. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. If the foundation is broke up, the prison is condemned. Nobody else can go in there because the prison has been condemned. And immediately, and immediately, and immediately, the doors were open. And everybody was loose. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're free to give him praise now. You're free to give him glory now. You're free to give him praise. What you gonna do? What you gonna do now that you're free? What you gonna do now that you're free? What you gonna do now that the power of God has set you free? Give him praise. My, 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 my. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, we're loose in the fire. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, if the devil could have, you would have been destroyed a long time ago. But the reason why when he breathed into your nostrils, he made you stormproof. He made you fireproof. He made you floodproof. Look at your name and say, I'm living because of him. It's in him that we live, we move, and we have our being. I can give him praise because he gave me the activity of my limbs to lift up and give him praise this morning. Somebody give him glory this morning. Just shout it with me. Say, my praise is intentional. It's personal. 
Look at somebody say, it's personal. will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth tell somebody say it's personal if your praise is not personal it has no power in it You gotta have a conviction down on the inside. After all I've been through, I still got joy. I still got my sanity. I still got my peace. Because he'll keep you in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee. So we're about to go. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. It's not the fact that I don't have problems. I got plenty of those. But I have a confidence. I have an assurity that he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Look at somebody and say, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. He Come on, somebody shout, he's coming. Matter of fact, hallelujah, in some people, he's already here. I, I, wish I, I wish I had somebody say, he's here. He may not have made it to your row yet, but he's here. Anybody feel the presence of God? Come on, somebody shout, he's here. Reach out and grab somebody by the hand. Tell him, say, my praise is intentional. When I praise God, I'm not praising him because everybody else is praising him. I'm praising him because he's been good to me. Praising him because he's been faithful to me. I'm praising him because without him, I couldn't do nothing. And I'm here to say I love him. I'm here to say, Lord, thank you for holding me together. I humble myself. I lift up holy hands as I begin to worship you. This is where he has us. Your praise has to be intentional. God is not a genie that we rub him but we worship him because of who he is and how he makes ways out of no ways he's faithful to us when you couldn't depend on nobody he was there When your enemies had surrounded you, he was there. When you thought you couldn't make it and nobody came to minister to you, he was there. Your praise has got to be intentional.
What are you saying, Elder? What are you saying, Pastor? Without God, you can't do nothing. Without Him, there's no way you can make it. Never stop praising God. Never stop giving God the glory for who He is and for what He's done. Because whenever you become unthankful, you become unholy. Just think about it. When do you slip back? You stop thanking God. As long as you thank God, you'll stay focused. When you begin to slip back, you take his blessings for granted and you stop praising God as though God is supposed to do it anyway. But he didn't have to wake you up this morning. But he did it anyway. And he did it because he deserves the praise. He doesn't need your praise. But he deserves the praise. And if you know him to have deserved the praise, I want you to lift those hands right there where you are. And I want you to give God praise in this house. Come on, worship him right there in your own corner. Come on. And the prisoners heard Paul and Silas. Don't be ashamed of your praise. Don't be ashamed of that praise. Come on, open that mouth. Haleo means to make a hilarious boast unto the Lord. Come on, let everybody hear. There may be somebody who's tied up around you, but your praise is going to set them free this morning. Your praise is going to help them get free this morning. Come on, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. On the day of Pentecost, they heard them on the outside. I, can I tell you, your praise can help somebody else be delivered. Your praise can help somebody else be free. Come on, don't hold that praise in. Don't hold, you got too much God inside of you to hold him inside of you. Come on, let that God out of you. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Hallelujah. Come on, from your soul. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Come on. I cried unto the Lord. And he heard. Come on. Come on, make your praise intentional. Make your praise intentional. Make your praise intentional. Glory, 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 glory. 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 My, 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 my. We've got to go. But just in case there's somebody here who say, I need to renew my walk with God. <laughs>